dear respected brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many verses talking about the previous nations to give us idea about what happened to the believers in the past. You will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah talking about previous nations. أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ نَبَأُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ So indeed, did you think that you will go to the Jannah easily without being tested as the previous nation have been tested? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah says وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقَصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرُ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ So talking a lot about previous nations, what happened to the believers, what happened to the disbelievers, actually give us hope as Muslims in these days. And nothing can support us more than knowing that some people, some time before us, have faced exactly or maybe more than we have been facing nowadays. Al Khansa, when she lost her brother, she said, Indeed, it's only because of a lot of other people around me, they lost their beloved, I would have killed myself because my, my brother lost. So that's, that's a, a theme in the Quran. As I said, if you skim cover to cover, you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot talking about the previous nations, what happened to the believers, what happened to the, to the disbelievers. Not only to support us as Muslims, but to support Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the leader of this ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hud, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ That indeed, we reveal to you the stories of the previous prophets, not to entertain you, it's to make your iman firm, to make your iman stronger. It's not for, as I said, it's, it's not for entertainment, it's a reminder about what happened to the prophets before you. And Prophet Muhammad Wasallam made very good use of these reminders in the Quran. You will find along the Sunnah, a lot, a many, many, many places in the Sunnah when Prophet Muhammad Wasallam cites and talking, relating what, what's happening to him to the previous uh, prophets. Narrated in Al-Bukhari, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said that once Prophet Muhammad Wasallam was dividing some money between his companion. And Abu Khuwaisira, he said, indeed, this division is not meant for the sake of Allah. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ got really mad about that. How come the Prophet of Allah divide not for the sake of Allah? But he quickly relates to this to what happened before. And he said, as narrated in Bukhari, رحم الله أخي موسى. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have his mercy on Prophet Musa. He has faced a lot more than what I have been facing now. رحم الله أخي موسى لقد أوذي أكثر من ذلك. And when the Sahaba were digging the trench around al Madina in Ghazwat al-Khandaq, and they really loved the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ to the extent that nobody can reach. And among the poetry that they were reciting, وَفِيْنَا رَسُولٌ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي غَدِي And among us is a Prophet who knows the unseen, who knows the future. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ quickly grabbed this and connected this to the, what happened in the, in the past. And he says, لا تطروني كما أطرت النصارى المسيح ابن مريم. Don't overpraise me as the Christian overpraised Jesus. Indeed, I'm the slave. I'm the servant of Allah. So say, say the servant of Allah and his messenger. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu got the lesson. It's always in his mind. What happened to the previous nations? What happened to the messengers in the past? We all know that the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in chunks. It's not the, the whole thing at a time. It's small verses at a time. And among the very first verses that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is Surah Al-Qalam. It's actually the second surah revealed in Quran after Surah Al-Alaq. And the very first introduction to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to any other prophet was in Surah Al-Qalam. The ayah that says, فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُودِ It's Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. So the first prophet that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu knows about from the Quran is Prophet Yunus. And here is the, the lesson. In the very first introduction, وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ And don't act as the fish companion, the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam acted. In a nutshell, what happened to Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, to those who don't know, Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was sent to 
more than 100,000 people in, in a city called Nainawa in Al-Araq. And he kept asking them to believe, asking them to believe, and zero response. Nobody responded to him to the extent that he just gave up. He just left without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he went through this hardship where he was actually swallowed by a whale and he spent few days inside the stomach of the, of the whale. And it's, it was only after he remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him out. So as I said, the very first introduction to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to any other prophet was Prophet Yunus. And here is the lesson to, to learn, O Muhammad, don't act as Prophet Yunus acted in this particular situation. And I just wanted to emphasize the fact that Prophet Yunus السلام, is one of the greatest prophet. Actually, among the only six prophets that there are surahs named after them, Prophet Yunus السلام, is one of them. Fasbir li hukmi rabbik. A scholar says that the, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are two, two different types. It's shari and qadari. Qadari commands, al aqdar is like being sick or being healthy, or being smart, or being so on and so forth. These are qadariyya. And there are commands that are shar'iyya, but it has to do with the religion itself, like to pray, to fast, to give charity, and so on and so forth. And for both of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Prophet Muhammad, فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ Rabbik. Be patient to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are in sickness, that's Allah's command, be patient. If you are healthy, that's Allah's command, be patient. If you don't have money, it's Allah's command, be patient. If I order you to pray, it's Allah's command, be patient on that. Don't pray some time and just leave it for some time. Just be patient to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it was qadari or shari. So the ayah says to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that despair, hopelessness, giving up, are not among, among your traits, are not among the traits of your followers. Sometimes we're trying hard. I want to be regular on my prayer. I do this a lot, but sometimes I miss it. And I, I go back and be regular on my prayer, and I miss it again, and so on and so forth, until I give up. No. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ Rabbik. Sometimes a sister of our sisters wants to put in hijab, but she's facing a lot of pressure from her maybe peers, from her mother or father or something and she gives up no fasbir li hukm rabbik i want to learn the quran i memorize a few ayah and then they are gone i gave up no fasbir li hukm rabbik it's a lesson for prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also for us so never give up and never think it's too late i'm very old i can't memorize quran now because i'm getting old i can't be regular on my prayer because you know i'm very busy it's never too late to do the right things. We all know Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second Khalifa, the, biggest, the, the second biggest companion of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu One of the things that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu gave them the tidings of, of being among the, the people of Jannah, right? It was a time that the Sahaba themselves, they said, لَوْ آمَنَ حِمَارُ الْخَطَّابِ لَآمَنَ عُمَرُ if the donkey of the uh, of Khattab embraces Islam, declared Ashadu anna la ilaha illallah anna Muhammad Rasulullah, then Umar would, would do it. They, they had no hope, they had zero hope that Umar radiallahu anhu would be a Muslim. And look what happened. It's never impossible. It's only about you, about doing your, your part, about trying hard, doing it one and, and, and two and three and even infinity times until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the door. Bukhari in Al-Adab Al-Mufrat says, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَا قَامَتِ السَّاعَةَ وَفِي يَدِي أَحَدِكُمْ فَسِيلَةَ فَلْيَغْرِسْهَا In the day of judgment, it's already the day of judgment, okay? People are like rushing to Al-Mahshar, and one of us has a, a baby palm tree, just plant it. What is the point of planting it? It's, it's already the end of the world. It is not your responsibility to think about results. It's your responsibility to do what you're supposed to do. This is the lesson. It's never too late. It is never too late. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكْ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ And don't act as Prophet uh, Yunus acted. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ totally grabbed this idea. Totally understood, digested what Prophet Yunus ﷺ did. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ with the people of Mecca. He invited them so long time, so long time, and nothing except tortured and rejection. 
from the majority of them to the point that he decided, okay, maybe it's time to shift gears. Maybe it's time to switch to another place. And he said, okay, let's go to Al-Ta'if, another city. It's a bit far from Al-Madinah. Maybe people there are different mind. They can accept me. And what happened when he went there? Nothing except torture. They rejected him, totally rejected him. More than that, they asked their like, uh, ill-minded people to, to stone him, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and, until he got injured. And in, in the hadith narrated in Bukhari, he said, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, فَلَمْ أَسْتَفِقْ إِلَّا بِقَرْنِ الثعالب. He walked Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and he didn't realize until he, he reached a place called Qarn al-Thalib. I was shocked to know that the distance between Ta'if and the Qarn al-Thalib is 50 kilometers. 50 kilometers. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, walked for 50 kilometers and he didn't realize. Just to emphasize the fact how deep in sadness he was, Prophet Muhammad وسلم. But he didn't give up. He kept inviting people to Islam. And here comes the result. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that particular day, in the day that he walked for 50 kilometers, opened to him not only one door, three doors. One of them, almost all of us know about it, when the, the angel of the Jibal, the angel of the mountains, he came and asked Prophet Muhammad وسلم, I am the messenger of Allah to you. If you order me, I will squish them between the Al-Akhshabayn, the two huge mountains between, between uh, Mecca. But because he got the lesson from the ayah, وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ He said, maybe there is still one try. He said, no. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if not them, if not them to be guided, maybe their offsprings, maybe their children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. Yeah. He got the lesson. وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ This is the one door. But two other doors were open to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in this particular day. Sevens of the jinn, it's totally new domain. It's not the humankind, it's not the mankind. It's now different world. It's seven jinn believed in Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in, in that day. قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرٌ, من, نفر من الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ This is the second door. And lastly, which is so ironic, subhanAllah, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was like bleeding, very tired, he, sa he sat some, somewhere and a slave came to him, having uh, some grapes. And he gave this to Prophet Muhammad وسلم. And Prophet Muhammad وسلم, asked him, what's your name? He said, Addas. And he said, where are you from? He said, I'm from Nainawa. He said, Nainawa, Baladur Rajul Salih, the city of the good man, Yunus ibn Matta. Adda said, how do you know Yunus ibn Matta? He said, I'm a messenger, and Yunus ibn Matta was a messenger. And Adda right away embraced Islam, and he kept like kissing the foot of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu This exact foot that's bleeding from trying and trying and trying. And this is so ironic. Adda from the same city of Yunus ibn Matta. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you kept knocking the door, you kept knocking the door, you kept knocking the door, I'm now opening three doors for you. One of them is just to remind you that you didn't act as Yunus ibn Matta acted. You didn't just give up. You didn't just lose hope. And here is the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us that we already entered the first 10 days of the hijjah as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, the best 10 days all over the year are the 10 days of the Hijjah. So it's a very good opportunity. And along the same idea of never giving up, these 10 days brings us the memories of Hajar and how she didn't give up. People who go to uh, Hajj or Umrah, we know the Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. And how Hajar السلام, she didn't do it one time or two times or three times. She did it seven times until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the door. So never give up. It's a, it's a very beautiful lesson that if, if, if we really grab it and understand it, never give up. Keep knock the door and keep knock the door until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens it to you. And it's usually this last trial that we gave it right, after, right before. It's only this last trial that if we do, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open it for us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us uh, among the believers and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good deeds in these 10 days and all over the year. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma a'inna al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'a. Wa a'inna al-baatila baatila wa arzuqna ishtinaba.